Hey, what's up guys? Theo here and welcome to part one of building an Instagram clone with uh, React, Webpack, Webpack Dev Server, uh, React DOM, uh, CSS modules, ES6, and a few other technologies. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to open up my iTerm and we're going to go ahead and fire up a directory here and I'm going to change directory to my desktop. From there, I'm going to make a directory called Airbnb clone. And let me change directory into there. And I need to create a few files. So I'm going to create a webpack.config.js. And this is where the executable webpack will look unless you set a different config. Um, I'm also going to touch the package.json here to hold our, all of our node modules and our npm scripts. I also want to touch in app.js and I want to touch in index.js for now. See, so this is going to be the entry point of our application. And then from there, I also just want to touch styles.css. We'll refactor this later, um, but for now, this is what all I'm going to use. And I also need to touch a .babel RC file to let Webpack know our Babel configuration. And now we need to install the actual uh, packages. So we do npm i and uh, dash dash save, right? I want to save all of these. I don't, I don't care about development and regular dependencies here, just for this tutorial, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so we're going to install Webpack. So later we might switch over from dev server. I'm going to install the dev server. I'm going to install React. I'm going to install React DOM. I'm going to install Babel Loader, Style Loader, CSS Loader, Post, um, CSS loader, and then what else do I want? I want to Babel preset React and Babel preset ES2015 so that Babel knows how to work with um, our React and ES2015 ES6 code. And we do dash dash save. We'll come back to this if I'm missing any. Oh, uh, sorry, I need to do npm init y actually to set up our default configurations. And let me run this command again. There we go. And let this save. And you could use yarn if you want. I'm just more comfortable with NPM. I haven't used too much yarn, to be honest. And so this first tutorial is just getting our tooling set up. Uh, yeah, you could go ahead and use Create React App, and you know we could be done with this step in literally a few minutes. But I want to show you guys how to set up hot module replacement um, so far with just uh, Webpack dev server, right? And I think it's pretty easy. Uh, so let's go ahead and I'm going to pull this up while we, lay, while we wait. I'm going to documentation where it's going to pull up. Um, guides, where is it? And here we go. Hot module replacement. And we'll follow this in a second. Let this install for us. So let's open this up. So we're going to also need to install React hot loader. And we're not going to be using this right now yet, but okay, Babel Core, let's install that as well. I think I have installed globally, that's why it's not complaining. Babel Core and dash dash save, let's install those. And now we need to do place this in our Babel RC file, these presets right here and the plugins. So let's let this go. Let's go ahead and open this up now with Sublime. Okay, I already had it going. So, here we go. I'm going to paste this into our Babel RC file. And basically, what this is saying here is that uh, we want to compile ES2015 code. Uh, React, we want that as a preset, so we've installed that in the plugin. We want React Hot Loader, and this is going to allow us to have our components reloaded. Uh, the next thing I want to do is set up for you guys our webpack config file. So basically, we need to do a few things. We need to import path, and this is a um, node global, right? So we're just going to require it. And that's going to grab from our global node module directory. And then I'm going to install or require webpack itself, that node module. And what we can do here is we can export, because this is Webpack 2, we're going to export a function 
that is going to return a configuration object. And the first piece that we put here is entry, our entry point, and that's going to be index.js. Say index.js. And now we're going to need to put an output. And this is an object. So the first thing here I'm going to put is file name. And I'm just going to put bundle.js. And now the path. So our path is going to be path.resolve. And this takes in uh, you know, multiple arguments or two arguments, and it's going to combine the path to the current directory on, and then dist, the dist folder. Um, and next thing I want to do, I'm going to put, I'm going to set watch to true, so Webpack will watch our files, but I guess we're using dev servers, it doesn't really matter, but you can still put it there. Um, and now we need to declare a module object. This is where we're going to place all of our loaders. So when it encounters a JavaScript file, what do we want to do? So um, module, and module takes in a rules array, okay, and it takes in some objects. So the first object here we're going to put is our JavaScript code. So the test is going to be any files that match this regex, this regular expression, JavaScript, right? And what we want to do, we want to go ahead and use a Babel loader, which we've installed. And what did I do wrong here? I think I did it, did I do it backwards? I think I might have done it backwards. Test.js rules object. Did I do it backwards? Test, yeah, I might have done it backwards. All right. Ah, right. No, I, did. I don't think I did it backwards. I missed one part right here. So we got to put that on there. Yeah. So anything that ends with a JavaScript file, um, it's going to go through our Babel loader. We need to place another test here for our CSS code. And so we're just going to say CSS. And this is actually going to take in an array. So we're going to say style loader. We want to use the CSS loader here. Cool. So that's our basic setup. I want to create real quick a file here called index.html. Stub out some boilerplate. So I'm going to say Airbnb clone. And down here at the bottom, I'm going to give it a script with a source. Say disk bundle.js. That's what's going to be created with our Webpack dev server. And now I need to do one more thing. Um, I'm going to apply these transitions or these um, these right here. This basically you can read about them. And um, so this is using the hot loader. So basically, any time uh, Webpack or these uh, modules detect that there's a change in your <coughs> in your um, React component is going to do basically a diff um, and just update the DOM with specifically what it's changed, those nodes. And obviously we need that entry point. So that's all good. We also need to put in this uh, plugin. So let me go ahead and do this for our entry. We're going to change this to be an array now. So let me place that right here. Entry. Okay, so we're going to put, put in all of these right here. Just clean this up just a little bit. Okay, so that's, that's kind of a lot, but basically what's happening is it's going through the hot loader, it's going through Webpack dev server, it's going to place it um, back on this port, replace all the data um, back into here, and then it's going to go through our entry point. Okay. Um, and then what we need to do also, after module, we're going to say plugins, and this is an array. And I'm going to say new webpack dot hot module replacement replacement plugin to enable hot module replacement globally. And this will just give names to our modules. This one's optional, the second one. Okay. 
So with all that, our code should work now. So let me just do this, console.log50. And to do this, I want to create this script. I want to get rid of this test script. I want to create a serve script. And this is just going to be webpack dev server, right? And cool, so let's go ahead and run this, npm run serve, and see what that gets us. I might be missing something, so let's try that out. It's running at localhost 8080, and it's bundling everything. That's why it's taking a little bit of time. So let's make sure this is actually working. OK, yeah, so bundle took quite a bit of time that first time. Um, let's go ahead and try this out. I don't think this is going to work yet. Airbnb clone. Spawn with the status of 4.4. Group source, disk, bundle.js, and what is it? Bundle.js. Ah, so we forgot one uh, key thing, and that we need to give it a public path for, so that um, uh, so that Webpack actually knows where to serve these, serve this file from. Okay, so let's try this one more time. PM run serve. Okay, so webpack output serve from disk. All right, so let's wait until bundle is finished. Here we go, and then when this, when this boots up, there you go, you can see 50 right there. And now, when I go ahead and make changes, you can see it's waiting for changes right here. So if I change it to 500 for 5,000, here we go, it's recompiling, and the whole page is refreshed. So, cool. Um, and this will also work with our CSS, right? So I can go ahead and go import um, styles.css, right? And it's gonna it's gonna update it again, right? We don't have any styles in there, but if I were to come in here and do body background color red and height 500 pixels, refresh it. There we go, and you can sort of see that in action that it is indeed. Um, reflecting our changes there. Cool. And then we can change this to blue. So this makes development really fast. Um, <coughs> next thing I want to do real quick is just put a component on the page and then we will uh, move on in the next tutorial to bring in a React router and setting up the home page. So uh, first thing I want to do here is import React and I want to destructure uh, the component um, component uh, object or a component class rather from uh, the react package so we'll say from react and i want to also import uh, well we're not going to render it there and i'm just going to you do a stateless functional component here and that's basically just a component that is just returning ui and it can take in props so we're just going to say const app right and all this is doing is returning some jsx so we'll say hello we'll say um Airbnb clone, right? And then we got an export app right here. And so now if I go ahead and import app from app, right? It's gonna go ahead and refresh this page. Cool. And what I wanna do now is I wanna go ahead and render the app. And the second argument is document.get element by ID root. And one more thing I need to actually do is import a render, the render method from the React DOM package. So this is gonna give me an error because we don't actually have root. You should, you should see it once it recompiles. Let's see what, what error we get. You're right, React is not defined. Um, and that's because we're using ES6 syntax and when you when it renders, it's going to look for React because this is going to be changed to React.createClass. Okay, so let's go ahead and import React from React. And this time, we're going to get a different error. Basically, that we don't have this container or the uh, root element. Let's go ahead and add this div with an ID of root. Okay, and now this refreshes. When it does refresh, or sorry, no, let me refresh that. Airbnb clone, cool. And if I go back in here, yo, and now we can see that our component is indeed uh, being re-rendered, okay? And then if I, again, if I give it some more styles in here, 
I can just say H1 color red, right? And there we go. So um, that is it, guys, for our first um, video in this series, uh, working on creating an Airbnb clone. Uh, we're to keep going, and I know this is a little confusing, this setup. I'm not 100% confident with it or comfortable with it uh, using Webpack Dev Server. I really I don't use it very much. Uh, so I'll look into a little bit more in terms of explaining this to you guys uh, and what, what's actually happening. Um, I think one of the big things is when you use this plugin, it exposes a property on the actual module itself um, called hot, and technically you're supposed to check for that, right? You're supposed to check if module.hot, and then you wanna actually swap out or replace modules, so we're not doing that fully. Um, but, right, so this is, this is kinda cool, right? So you can also see that nothing has changed, right? So we can save it, and you can see it's not gonna actually app updating recompile, like nothing has changed, right? So it's not gonna, it's only, it's smart. It's only gonna do a diff and change what is needed. So, um, hey guys, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in part two. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Take care.